So SCG had a con over the weekend, and what would be an SCG event without Modern? They actually had a lot of Modern events between a 5k trial, but also a big 30k event. So this is a big open. People are going to have to bring their best Modern decks. And we have the results. It's been a while since we've seen a big Paper Magic uh, uh, tournament with a top 8 and everything. All right, so congratulations to Yi Ching Zhang. Winning with four color blink with Yorian, the Yorian version. So it, I don't know, it, it, to some degree, it looks like Yorian might be unnecessary, but to another degree, this is the version that ends up winning everything. Oh no, MTG Melee, what we can't see that we can't see the cards. Gotta up your game, MTG Melee. All right, so we've got uh, one Yorian, of course. The four Teferi Time Raveler, four Ren and Six, four Omnath, Locus of Creation. Oh, there we go. Now it's popping up. We got four Ragavan. We got the four Solitude, three Ice Fang Quaddle. Just because uh, uh, Arkham's Astrolabe got banned did not mean that this card need to get needed to get banned. It's still around. Two Fury, one Emrakul, the Promised End. That's interesting. What an interesting card. Cost one less to cast for each card type among cards in your graveyard. So like what? It's going to get down to like eight mana maybe? Land, creature, instant, sorcery, planeswalker. Or planeswalker. Enchantment maybe. Oh, dress down. Yeah, that's an enchantment. All right, so maybe we can get it down to eight or seven. Uh, four abundant growth, one dress down, four expressive iteration, four prismatic ending. You know, the usual suspects. Four Counterspell, two Latimer's Call, two Ephemerate. That is interesting. I feel like this list is going down on Ephemerate for other cards. Uh, two Lightning Bolt and two March of Otherworldly Light. Decide, no, we're, we do need a little few more Prismatic Ending effects because it exiles anything, anything on the battlefield. You play a Hammer, exile. You play Cigar to Zade, maybe I'll exile that first. So, uh, this is, what, now the second or third consecutive paper event where the four-color blink deck wins the whole thing? You keep, you stay in line, four-color blink, you stay in line, you got a lot of cards here that can get banned. I don't think it's out of the question that Omnath could get banned out of this deck. It's weird, there's a lot of cards people hate in this deck, like a lot of people think Raghavan will get banned eventually. Solitude is probably not going anywhere. Same thing with Fury. Ren and Six, people want banned. People want to see Teferi, Time Raveler banned. So there's like four really good candidates in this deck. I mean, even if you get rid of it, I don't know if it matters. I think the most likely card might be Omnath. I think this was a very, very good card. People slept on this card when Uro got banned. Like Uro plus Omnath was the package. That was the deal. And you could have stepped, still played a lot of Omnath decks, even with Uro's demise. And we're just seeing Omnath. So you, we're just seeing Omnath come back. I found an Omnath killer that has fight against Murktide and others. I'm shredding with this list. All right, congratulations. How'd the Fusion 5K go? It went awful. The event was great, but my my results were my results were okay. I went 3-3. I'll have a vlog of it coming up sometime soon. I would have gone to Syracuse, actually, if it wasn't for the Fusion 5K. I would have went to Syracuse. True story. The narrator. People still brought their bullshit pet decks. They did. Who, because who wouldn't? Why would, why would you not go to your list? Why, why not bring your pet list? Thank you for your suggestion. I brought I bought the Team of Rhinos, and I've been dominating my shop lately. You're welcome. All right, so that was first place. But there's more places than that. All right, we have Is It Murktide. Some people try to say, oh, Is It Murktide isn't that big part of the metagame, but it's always there. It's, it's not always breaking into top eight. It's always in the top 16, and it's always flooding the top 32. So it's definitely one of those decks you have to be prepared for. For Ragavan, for Ledger Shredder, now replacing um, Dragon Rage Chandler, which is good for me, to be honest. Actually, I find Dragon Rage Chandler a much larger pain than Ledger Shredder. This is more expensive. This is harder to trigger. Um, yeah, I'm I'm totally for this change. And three Merktide Regent. 
Uh, nothing too unusual here. You've got your, as usual, expressive iteration that considers the lightning bolts, the unholy heats, the Archmage's charms, the spell pierces. Spell pierces going, it's coming up in numbers. Can I get your spell pierces? Anything spicy in the sideboard? Not really. Got a Blood Moon, Magus of the Moon. Yeah, good stuff in there. Good stuff. You turn into a control deck here. Uh, what do we also have? Living End! Okay, this, okay, so a lot of people are asking me, what's the most underrated deck right now in Modern? It might be Living End. I think this car, this deck is probably worth a few more percentage points than it's actually getting at this moment. It should be, I think it should be a much larger presence in Modern uh, than it is. Is there a high chance of Ragavan getting banned? I'm planning to get a playset. I cannot say. I would say a year ago, people would be certain Ragavan would get banned in a year. And now, I'm not sure. It's a very good card. It is banned in Legacy. It's banned in Legacy over here. And it is very strong for Modern, but actually I think Modern is sucking this card up for the most part. There isn't that many Ragavan decks out there, and I don't even think Murktide is like... Well, I'm not going to say Murktide is nothing. Murktide is a pretty big presence in Modern. Um, but I would say the 4-color control, 4-color Omnath deck is even more dangerous. It has almost been a year! Actually, maybe it has been a year. When did Modern Horizons 2 come out? When did Modern Horizons 2 come out? Oh, it has been a year. Happy birthday, Modern Horizons 2. Happy birthday. I'm scared now to invest in elementals because of what you just said. Um, well, here's the deal. How, how good... Here, this is how you have to look at these cards, right? This is how you have to look at investing into a deck. Like, sure, there. Okay, I could say with certainty, with certainty, something from this deck is getting banned. I could say I don't know what it is, but then you got to ask yourself: Is the deck still pretty okay and playable without with one card gone? Like, if if Omnath is banned. Is this deck still playable? And I think the answer is yes. If Ragavan is banned, is the deck still playable? The answer is yes. If Renin 6 is banned, is the deck still playable? The answer is yes. If Teferi Time Raveler is banned, is the deck still playable? Probably. It will have a way harder time versus Cascade and Living End, or basically just any Cascade decks, but I still think it's probably pretty good. Yeah, if Yorian gets banned, is the deck still good? Obviously, it will still be good. I mean, Yorian would be the weakest ban, to be honest. I mean, you, you banned it out of principle, basically, but um, but I, I think it would be the, the crappiest ban. So this is a deck where if one card gets banned, the rest of the cards are going to maintain a lot of value and the deck will still perform at a pretty good rate. Unlike a deck like, say, well, like Splinter Twin. Splinter Twin got banned and, well, the, the deck was banned. Clark Clan Ironworks, Clark Clan Ironworks got banned. The deck was banned. So, I mean, that that that's that was the end of that. Desi, do you think the companion mechanic has a chance to be entirely banned? If so, do you think once it's banned, Luris now can be unbanned? No, I do not think it is getting all banned. They'll just ban Yorian, maybe, and then leave us the really crappy companions. A good transition to the sponsor. Yeah, talking about Fusion Gaming Online. I, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get to the sponsor a little bit later. I want to look at a few more deck lists. So anyway, I, that's the way I think you should look at cards getting banned, like when you want to invest in a deck. Like, investing in Living End would be more scary, because if, if they were to ban a card here, what's it going to be? Is it going to be one of the Cascade spells? That would be a beating if they banned something like Violent Outburst, which was the instant speed version of this card. Like the instant uh, speed uh, Living End. Or Cascade spell into Living End. Uh, sorcery, Living End. Actually, where's their... Oh yeah, the other Cascade card is Shardless Agent. See, if they ban Shardless Agent, the deck still lives. They just go back to the old black-red version, which was worse 
overall. No, no, actually, no, they were still playing. The, the blue version existed before Shardless Agent, I think. It was just a huge upgrade when they printed Shardless Agent, but the blue version did exist. Anyway, uh, nothing unusual here. You still got your street rates. Your uh, uh, actually, street wraith might be different. I don't know if they all if the blue version pl always plays street wraith by default. We've got endurance here. That's when you got endurance in this deck. It's, when, it's the card they fear. They play with the card they fear. But it's a very cute deck. This deck. Foundation Breaker, three more Endurance, three Solity, three Leyline of Sanctity, one Force of Vigor, one Brazen Borrower, and one Mystical Dispute. I am surprised at the low number of Mystical Disputes in this deck, especially since it's really well positioned. Really well positioned versus the um, uh, Blue Red Murktide decks and even the Omnath deck. The old blue version. No, no, that uh, that's the old, old, old blue version. But there was a blue version. I'm pr I maybe I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure there was a blue version of this deck. They they were going blue already. Like it was a four color living end deck. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I don't remember it well. And then Shardless Agent came out and was like, "Wow, the deck got even better." I might be wrong about it though. <laughs> Please leave my living end alone. To be honest, if Renin 6 is banned, the deck loses the most playability. Missing land drops 1 to 5 is a real be beating for 4 color. I often just won uh, by force negating their force of negating their Renin 6 on turn 2. I think if Renin 6 got banned, they'd replace it with Utopia Sprawl. That's all. It would still live. They have replacements. And then you'd have to fit you then you'd have to face down like turn 3 Omnath. Uh, Golgari mid-range. What does that mean? Oh, it's literally a mid-range. It's just the cookbook deck. All right, cookbook. That's nice to see the cookbook deck. Um, making top eight. You know, this is very often we get shells of this in deck list review, like as a budget deck. So it's nice to see that this sort of budget-ish deck can still hang and uh, compete at a top level. This is actually really nice to see. Now, of course, this version is going to have some of the better cards. This is playing a Gilded Goose, which uh, makes a food token. We've got Urza Saga over here, which can find your cookbook. Uh, Trail of Crumbs is cheap enough, though. Finale of Devastation. Oh, that's a really... This is actually a really nice list to see in the top eight. So all you cookbook fans, you still have hope. There is a chance. There is a chance for you. And I have a feeling people are just are not prepared for this deck. Like, if you play this against me, like, tomorrow, I'm not really going to play optimally. I totally forget how, like, the nuances of this archetype. You know, how, how, how many treasures equals how much damage. What can they do with this many treasures? You forget about those things. Whoa! What do we have here? Eldrazi Tron. All right, so what is your secret tech in 2022? This deck is basically, it's not dead, but it's like, it's struggling. It's really struggling. This deck's trying to prove that Chalice of the Void is very good in this format. Really, really good. We should look at the 30k trial. You mean the... The, uh, uh, we could look at the 30k K trial. There's a lot of lists over there. Okay, we have four Karn the Great Creator, two Ugin the Inevitable. Uh, we have one Karn Sign of Urza. That's a new one. Ugin the Spirit Dragon. That's also sort of new. That was that is definitely not stock. Not stock. Matter Reshaper, Reality Smasher, four uh, Thought Not Seer, three Walking Ballista. Nothing unusual there. Two Relic of Progenitus. That is a little unusual, especially when you're running Chalice in the main deck alongside it. But I guess you can squeeze in the Relic anyway with uh, Urza Saga. Only a two of in this list. But that's also not entirely stock either. Because that card usually just doesn't have anything to go get. I mean, you can get the Expedition Map, but you can't go get Chalice of the Void. So I guess it just it's just an Expedition Map Finder. When all is dust, three Dismember. Uh, cavern, waste, blast zone, swamp. Yeah. Interesting. Don't count Eldrazi Tron out yet in 2022. 
All right, we got Kevin. Kevin Than uh, Thanaket played Hammer Time. Ooh, we got Esper Sentinel, Pure Steel Paladin, Stoneforge, Giver of Runes. Two Ornithopter and only two Memnite, so not heavy on the zero drops. And playing the blue version with Reality Chip. For Colossus Hammer, uh, I think everything else is pretty stock here. Opting to play an extra Steel Shaper's Gift. That's not entirely stock. A lot of decks have just shied away from this. They're like, well, I got Urza Saga. Isn't that good enough? Isn't that good enough? Well, Kevin says no, it's not good enough. It's now year six of no one finding a better card than Mattery Shaper for three mana. Well, at least in an Eldrazi Tron deck. Chalice kills 80% of today's modern meta. It does, but it's hard to protect because every deck that dies to Chalice has answers. They all have answers. Amulet Titan. You're that F Pavlouche, the deck is still good. It's not going away. We got the Prime Evil Titan. We have Dryad, a Boreal Grazer. Cultivator Colossus. Wasn't this a meme card? Like, I swear it was like a meme, like one of those big meme -y creatures that uh, F. Pavlouche plays in his decks, and then this one just ended up being good, I guess. I swear it wasn't, it wasn't really stock. Azusa. We got four Urza Saga in this deck, of course. Three Explore. Alex Bertoncini could come and play this deck. It was his, you could just ask, which deck has the Explorers? Amulet Titan. Of course. Uh, and the deck plays, of course, Boseju. Nothing, I think, too unusual. This deck looks very, very stock. Super stock. Uh, and a Boros Burn deck made the top eight. It's, it is really funny that Burn in this economy is still playable. In an economy of, like, Mer of of Omnath, which of course gains you tons and tons of life. Yeah, Boseju, that, it is true actually, like, the, uh, Kamigawa Neon Dynasty was a huge beating for Chalice of the Void, because not only do we, did they print Boseju, uh, Boseju who endures, but they also printed, uh, Tawara, two cards that can deal with Chalice, and then you just go off and, you know, play all your one, one drops as quickly as possible. Uh, where am I? Okay, so the burn deck. I think super stock. Nothing unusual here. Super stock burn. Oh, deflecting palm. You know what? At um, in the Fusion 5K, I got my first draw on in Paper Magic, like before the round ends, because of Deflecting Palm. Uh, my opponent was like at I don't know eight life. I'm at two, so I attack with all my Merfolk, and they Deflecting Palm my Master of the Pearl Trident, dealing two damage to me. We had to call a judge. I wasn't even. I was like pretty sure it was a draw, but I wasn't sure if. Do I die first? Do they die first? What happens? So anyway, we both died simultaneously and we went to game three. Then I lost that one and we went to game four in Paper Magic. I think that was my first game four in, a paper, ma in paper Magic. What deck would you recommend bringing to Las Vegas MTG 30th for a shot at the beta box draft? Would I recommend for color blank? I mean, all these, uh, I would say Four Color Blank, Is It Merc Tide, Living End, Crashing Footfalls, Hammer Time. Those are your best bets, I think, for winning the whole thing. If you're broke, Boros Burn. Those are my choices. Faced Etron a few days ago, they ran Basilisk Collar to be fetched with Urza's Saga and works with Walking Bliss Axa. Actually, pretty clever. That is not a bad idea. Burn is the cheapest tier deck of modern. It's the only old deck that is still viable. Uh, I would say Eldrazi Tron is still old, but you might not. But you may not say that's viable. Okay, so a quick rundown of other decks in this top 30. We have a uh, four-color combo. What the hell is that? I actually don't know what this deck is. This is just a whole new deck in itself. Three Teferi, three Ren and six. 
Tameshi, Reality Architect. Whenever one or more non-creature permanents uh, are returned to hand, draw a card. This ability triggers only once each turn. So whenever one or more non-creature permanents are returned to hand, you get... So you can, like, a Boro back to your hand and get a card. It's a moon folk. And you can pay white X, return a land you control to its owner's hand, uh, return target artifact or enchantment card with mana value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Activate only as a sorcery. It's only two of a Boreal Grazer, which is weird. Cultivator Colossus, that is also really weird. Colossus Sky, I don't even understand this deck anymore. Goblin, okay, Goblin Engineer, I understand. But are there any artifacts? Omnath, Lotus Bloom. Okay, so you probably swap Lotus Bloom onto the battlefield to cast some big stuff. Portable Hole, Seal of Removal. Wargate, oh, I heard of this deck. Search the library for a permanent card with convert mana cost X or less. Put it into play, then shuffle your library. This card's one purpose. This card has a purpose and only one purpose only. And get the Lotus Bloom. So you basically don't lose anything. You spend three mana to get three mana, but you have the option to like wait till, until next turn for that. So it's infinite mana with Tameshi and Lotus Bloom. Is that how this works? Return a land you control to its owner's hand. Return to an artifact or enchantment card with mana value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Only activate as a sorcery. How is this infinite? You gotta return a land. You only have X number of lands you can return back to your hand. It's a lot of mana. It will be a lot of mana. So you crack, pay away. You can get white mana out of it, crack, and it's keep paying white mana, return all your lands, and get X not. It's like. From what I'm reading, whenever one or more non-creature permanents are returned to hand, draw a card. So the way I'm reading this, you get like X Lotus Blooms for the amount of mana you have. It's Tameshi Bloom! Oh, Colossus puts lands into play. It's a three card combo. Enter the battlefield. You may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. If you do, draw a card and repeat this process. But how do you get this? So how do you get this thing onto the battlefield? You may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. If you do, draw a card and repeat this process. Oh, so I can't... So for as many lands as I have in my hand, and then with this ability... Oh, wait... So when it enters the battlefield, I could have infinite land drops and draw my deck and have infinite mana with Lotus Bloom. Is that how this works? So when it enters the battlefield, put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. If you do, draw a card. And so I get the Lotus Bloom for infinite white mana and I keep, keep bringing lands back to my hand with this trigger on the stack. I think. Actually, I don't now. I, now I'm confused. I, I have to see this in action. I'm just gonna assume that that's how something like that works. Two lotus blooms and a land. Return target artifact or enchantment card of mana that costs X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Bloom nets two mana. Yeah, I understand. Effectively infinite? What is effective? Look, you're infinite or you're not. You're infinite or you're not. Okay, Tameshi powers Colossus. Powers more Tameshi. Draw entire deck. I think that's how it works. Like, I think. Like, if I'm allowed to interact with this bottom ability. The problem is I don't know if, like, if it triggers again per land I put onto the battlefield. Or I have to wait for this thing to fully resolve before I get to do anything with Tameshi. Anyway, you're going to get a lot of mana. You're going to get some arbitrarily large amount of mana. You're going to get a lot of mana. And then, how do you win the game? Just with Cultivator Colossus? Colossus Sky Turtle? You, get all the, you have all this mana. You can do anything. So what are you going to do with it? I don't actually see like some way that you just win the game on the spot. Like there could be an Emrakul in this deck, for example. That would win the game on the spot. Just looks like you just put a very big board out and that's good enough. And that could be good enough. Might be more than enough to win the game. All right, so that was neat. I was not expecting that under the fold. 
Uh, and with that, I think it's time. Let's do a segue. It's time to segue into our sponsors. Because you want to play that sweet Tameshi deck. You got to get cards, right? Where are you going to get those cards? FusionGamingOnline.com. Deal of the week. Streets of New Capenna singles and sealed product. 15% off. Don't want your... Need to get those ledger shredders? That bootlegger stash? 15% off at uh, FusionGamingOnline.com. The sealed product will be, I think, only exclusive to the Canadians, though. They cannot send that overseas. But they can send singles. So you can buy your singles internationally. Do not forget to use coupon code NIKACHU at checkout for 5% off all your purchases. And we're going to thank Manitraders, the premier place for renting Magic cards online. If you want to try out the Tameshi deck, in modern, see if it's right for you. Maybe you can get ninth place. Maybe you can improve it and get to top eight. You can rent it with Mana Traders. You can support the channel using my Mana Traders link in the description below or save 10% off your first two months using coupon code Nikachu underscore WBN. And now back to the deck lists. Not true infinite, but enough to draw entire deck slash play second Colossus win with Finale of Devastation. Thank you. It just, you know, it terrifies me. Like, am I missing something? Is there really infinite mana here? Because if there's actually infinite mana... Um... I feel stupid when I can't find it. Okay, two Yawgmoth decks made the top 16. I think all stock stuff. Do you think Soul Ring in Modern would be broken? Of course! What's... What would... Ridiculous question is this. I was just talking the other day that we should ban this thing in uh, Commander. I mean, we had a whole week about that. So it's legal only basically in Commander and probably shouldn't even be legal there. I was asking Commander players about Soul Ring in Commander. Like, what if we banned Soul Ring? What if we banned the artifact man, like the fast artifact man in Commander? And they're like, uh. I guess it's worth experimenting. It's weird. It's like Commander players never even considered that maybe the format could be better if they ban this card. They just, they just, it's, it's, it's like, it's like Mox, it's not like how Mox Opal was for Modern. It was this insanely busted card that was institutionalized into the format and people just cannot see a world without it at this point. Do you think Mox Ruby would be OP and modern? Yeah, mm, nah, that would be fair. Just kidding, that's also ridiculous. It's a needlessly convoluted combo, just like Yogmoth Twin and Ad Nauseam were so much better. Just feels like crap. Want her back, huh? Are you talking about the, uh, the four color combo? I'm not sure. Now that you get Golgari Yogmoth. Okay, just going down the list, we got five color Indomitable Creativity. Uh, another Amulet Titan, a Team Rhinos deck, another four color Blink deck. Which, by the way, I think these four color Blink decks very underrated of a deck. Maybe not underrated, but uh, underrepresented because of the price point. It's a very expensive deck. It's the it's like the most it's like one of the most expensive decks in Modern in a very long time. Okay, so four color Blink. Let's go take a look here from MTG Goldfish. Oh, good God. $1,865. That is expensive. That is very expensive. Imagine foiling that out too. Not everyone has that money. And also, of course, people are scared of uh, the fact that it could get banned. Main problem is that the community is like 50-50 on banning it. What, Soul Ring? Doesn't sound like that to me. Sounds like... 90 10 people want to keep their soul ring don't take my soul ring away don't take my mana crypt my mana vault leave my mox diamond alone you can barely rent that deck with mana traders you probably need like two accounts uh okay steam rhinos mono black control all right this is i think the first Oh, this is not it, though. This is something completely unique. No, no, this is a Cabal Coffers Urborg deck. It looks a little different, though. They don't have Karn the Great Creator. Okay, let's look at this list. So maybe there are the new variations of the Cabal Coffers Urborg list. 
which is a very exciting list. This is a unique, this is like a new archetype, just out of nowhere, people are starting to play. Um, it's been discovered that the combination of Urborg, Tomb of Yawgmoth, and Cabal Coffers is actually a pretty good, makes a good Tron impersonation. Makes a good impersonation of Tron. And so I was more familiar with the Karn the Great Creator control version, but it looks like we have something like, well, I mean, this is still basically a control deck. Two Liliana the Veil, three Tarash Dread Cantor, one Archon of Cruelty. All right, we still have the Reanimator package, Grizzlebrand. That, I don't know, is so common. Four Relic of Progenitus, not a bad idea. Uh, two Maze Mind Tome. That, I think, is new. I don't think I saw that in the other lists. So that's like some good value, just in case the deck starts uh, going, uh, what's it called? Starts petering out in, in cards. Invoke Despair. That a card I'm familiar with. Target opponent sacrifices a creature. If they can't, they lose two life, and you draw a card, then repeat this process for an enchantment and Planeswalker. With Urza Saga on the board in the, in the metagame, this is like a pretty huge beating. Huge beating. Four Thoughtseize, three Inquisition of Kozilek, three Profane Tutor, which is surprising. This looks like a pretty good card. It looks like a four of card. Two Blood Chiefs Thirst. Underrated card in Modern. Very underrated, especially since it can kill Ren and Six on turn two. Uh, sorry, turn one on the draw. Uh, one Damnation, which is, yeah, I guess that's the thing. Four Fatal Push, two March of Wretched Sorrow. That's also, that is a very new card. As initial cost, blah, 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 you can exile a black card. March of Wretched Soul deals X damage to target creature or planeswalker, and you gain X life. Nice, nice idea, nice tech. So this is a pretty fresh, I think this is like a very highly adapted take on the Herb Workable Coffers deck. I've not seen this list before. Four Dothy Voidwalker in the sideboard. That is some pretty cool tech. So people will probably take out their, their removal spells thinking that they are useless. And then all of a sudden you throw this Dothy Voidwalker on the board. And it can act like True Name Nemesis. I mean, if there's no removal on this thing, it's unblockable because of the shadow. And it's like a gr And it's, of course, it's like a, a ley line of the void. I think people have forgotten about Dothy Voidwalker. And I guess this is just a good, a good shell for it because a lot of people will not expect that their removal is worth anything in this matchup. Uh, two Engineered Explosive, two Necromantia, two Expedition Map, one March of Wretched Sorrow, Emrakul the Promised End, another Liliana, Sundering Titan, and a Damnation. This is a very cool list. A Conference deck without uh, Torment of Hailfire? That's unique. I figured Torment was the best top end finisher for a deck, but I suppose Invoke Despair makes the deck less all in on Coffers. And that's, that's how it should be anyway. Makes me think it's funny how things from 93 became codified as real magic, but it could have gone other ways, maybe. Yes, it could have. How many Blood Chiefs and Push would you play in the main deck? I think this is a good number. I have no problem with this number. The four Fatal Push, the two Blood Chiefs Thirst. You know, pending your metagame, if your metagame is heavier on Planeswalkers, you might want to go up on Blood Chiefs Thirst, because this deck doesn't really actually have any way of dealing with a, with a Planeswalker. Can you hit Planeswalkers with Wretched Disp Sorrow? X time to target creature or plane. Okay, so you have so you have an X, some extra options for planeswalkers here. Ghost Beard has this deck. Loves loves mono black control. I watched the event and they hard cast Grizzlebrand on camera. Yeah, it appears that there is no reanimator pack. Like I thought, okay, we have the reanimator cards, and then uh, as we get through this list, oh, there is no reanimator here. There's no persist. They will just hard cast it, which is totally fair, totally fine with uh, Cabal Coffers and Urborg. And it is a control deck. The game will go long. This is a great card to have, and you can profane tutor for it. No, this is fantastic. Basically, it hits the board. Draw seven. Probably it's GG from there. Why not Expedition Map? I don't know. That's their that's their take on this. No Expedition Map. Just playing. It's just Mono Black Control. They got Hand Disruption. They got Sweepers. They gain a bunch of life. They're literally just playing Land Drops. Yeah, they're, do they're actually doing nothing unfair. This is a cool list. I think this is a really cool list. Do you think they can squeeze in a murderous rider? I don't think it's I don't think it's necessary. Murderous rider is what three three mana to destroy something. Oh, they have an expedition map here. Okay, so for the right matchup, they'll bring an expedition map, I guess. Maybe for the land destruction crowd. 
Okay, that was cool. That was pretty cool. Okay, lame Amulet-Tide, is it Murktide? Boros Burn, Boros Burn, is it Murktide? Is it Murktide? All the is it Murktide decks have shown their colors. Living End, creative, uh, five color Indomitable Creativity. Chris Ross from my Discord. It's like, yeah, I'm gonna make a creativity deck, but he thought he was making it for the first time. And I'm like, well, you know, just copy one of these other lists. He's like, these other lists exist? This was already a deck? Yeah, creativity is still a deck. Jund. Oh, Jund! Okay, is it the. Is it Boomer Jund? No, not quite Boomer Jund. You got Ragavan in there. Team of Rhinos. Mono Blue Affinity. I love my. I, you know what? I gotta play a league with this. I actually love the look of this deck. I love the look of this deck. It look. It, it seems like it's a deck. It's just missing something. It's either like. It's one card off from being great. Or it's like it's misbuilt by one card. Ornithopter, Sojourner's Companion. I love the I love the Sojourner's Companion. Thought Monitor, busted, absolutely busted. I would I would not be surprised if the card missing from this deck is just Urza. It's probably just missing Urza. Got cranial plating here, Dark Steel Citadel. Missed all the artifacts are lumped together. Two Nettle Sis, two Four Spring Leaf Drum, Ether Spell Bomb, Razor Tide Bridge. One Shadow Spear, one Treasure Vault, one Welding Jar. Oh, the Artifact Mana! The Artifact Mana is so busted! The Artifact Mana! You can't unban the Artifact Mana, Nikachu. Look, they, they're only playing one Treasure Vault. Da four Dark Steel Citadel, yes, but only one Treasure Vault. They could play more! But they're not. Why? Because they probably need the blue mana. They'll probably play the four... They, they would probably play the four, um... Blue artifact mana, but that would be about it. <laughs> is it Murktide has shown its colors? It's is it. Missing Mox Opal. It is missing Mox Opal. Yeah, I love the Salamander. I I don't know. Somehow I just the I love the name here. Sojournor Companion has got this neat picture. Great picture, actually. 10 out of 10. The silvery the silver salamander. Spire of Industry. You see, they need the colored mana. They need it. Are they playing other non-blue cards in here? That Metallic Rebuke is such a beating. Such a good card in this deck. Etch Champion in the sideboard is weird. Two Dismember, one Pithing Needle, one Relic. No, it's still mono blue. Are they? Yeah, they're playing the Thought Cast. That's nice. This is such a cool deck. I love it. It's missing something though. It's it's one of these decks that are like it's good but not great. It's good for a deep finish, but it, it cannot it's not making top eights. Like it five zeros events online, but it can't top eight a modern challenge. Or it struggles. It's struggling out there, people. We have a Grixis Shadow List with four ledger shredder. It's interesting, these uh shadow lists. They've gone really heavy on creatures. This is more creatures I've ever seen in a sh in a shadow list. You know, we're getting close to 20 creatures here. We're over we're over 16. What are we? Uh, for a 16, 17 creatures. Jeez. How many? How much removal? Not a lot of removal. That's good to know. I mean, they've got some. So what is this? Four, eight, 11, 11 pieces of removal. That's not a lot of removal. So just know your creatures are probably in good shape versus Death Shadow now. It's most more or less a grind, more or less a grind creature deck. Nothing like a sphere of dampness to ruin a wizard's day. Unban, yeah, unban the OG Mirrodin lands. I just think they're unjustly banned. That's all. Four of the artifact lands would be fine. The blue one would be the only one that could be problematic. I still doubt it though. I sincerely doubt it. Yeah, so Jornor. I'm not even. I'm probably not even pronouncing it properly. It looked very French. Azorius Affinity. I'm not in love. I know. I'm aware of these the, these versions of the deck. I'm not in love with this. Esper. It feels more. Feels more like Hammer Time. Does it have Hammer? Shadow Spear. No, they does not have Hammer. But it feels more like Hammer Time to me. Urza. I think the Urza probably should squeeze into that affinity deck. I, be I bet I'm sure they've tried and it doesn't work. 
Colorless Tron. What the hell does that mean? I thought all Eldrazi decks were colorless. Okay, so the na deck name was just misnamed. It's Eldrazi Tron. I think uh, Synod Sanctum can do some crazy value stuff in there. Synod Sanctum. Remove target permanent you control from the game. Um, return to play under your control. All cards are removed from the game with Synod Sanctum. I think this is a bit clunky. You just spend a lot of time like removing stuff, but not necessarily bring them back. And what if they destroy this thing? Then nothing comes back. It's all gone. Bye bye. Correction, when you said it was already a deck, I assumed you were referring to my specific is it list using the Locust God Sage of the Falls combo. I was fully aware of creativity in the meta. Oh, okay. I misinterpreted it. I thought you were just unaware of creativity was a thing. How much is the Cabal Coffers deck? I don't know. Um, where did it go? Was it on the last page? Mono blue. Oops. Well, how do I go back to the last page? black control mono black control I hope it hopefully it gives me a price I don't know how much this deck costs I don't know it doesn't tell me you have to wait for it to pop up on goldfish and then they'll uh 700 ish that's a pretty good that's a good price would Merfolk play the blue artifact lens to not get boiled no because we would just it would just get blown up by artifact destruction that'd be terrible I would absolutely not play that card. Okay, uh, our hunt for more cards. A deck not available. Devin didn't submit his deck list. Five color indomitable creativity. Okay, we're on page three now. Boros Burn, Gulagar, Yogmoth, Colorless Tron again. Another four color blink. Gruel Ponza! It would seem to me like Ponza should not be in a bad sh in bad shape, but it probably has a terrible Murktide matchup. It probably is not very good versus Murktide because they're a pretty mana efficient deck, and this is not very mana efficient. You got your Chandra here. Chandra Torch of Defiance is a fantastic card for Arbor Elf, Four Season Pyromancer. Just a classic, classic Ponza. Three Fury, two Scavenging Ooze. Scavenging Ooze, I have a feeling, just doesn't belong in this deck. Just play. Uh, this, I, yeah, I'm pretty strong about, I feel pretty strongly about this. This should be just Endurance. It's just a far, Endurance is just a far superior Graveyard Hate card, and it can be played for free, and it can block Flyers. Bone Crusher Giant to Glory Bringer. It's like they just took this list from a long time ago, like two years ago. They bought this thing during the pandemic. Because this deck got started to get really popular when uh, COVID broke out. Oh, another mono blue affinity deck. Come on, Seth. Show us some tech we didn't see before. I'm actually getting fascinated. I love mono blue decks. Hence why I play Merfolk. Sojourner's Companion again. Thought not thought Monitor, the Mirror Enforcer, but one ginger, ginger Brute. No, it looks like it's pretty similar to the other list. Only two thought casts on that one, though. You know, Ooze was done when it became a promo. Well, it was still pretty good at, uh, at the time. Of all the worries Merfolk has in the current meta, Boil is low on the to- Yeah, Boil and- Actually, Choke is pretty popular, though. Choke is not uh, irrelevant. Choke is seeing play in a lot of green decks. Is Olivia mobilized for war good? She gives haste to Nocturnus. Uh, or can discard Silver Smote to give haste to Scavenger and bring Ghoul back? What? Okay, Olivia 
mobilized. Three three flyer. When another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may discard a card. If you do, put a counter on that creature. Uh, what? Oh, whenever another creature, yeah, you may discard a card, put a counter on it. It gains haste until end of turn. It becomes vampire in addition to its other types. This card sucks. So the, uh, Olivia herself does nothing when she enters the battlefield, but it's when you cast another card, you'd have to discard a card, and it gives haste. So hold on, what was your point? She gives haste to Nocturnus, or can discard Silver Smoke to give haste to? No, it's just not worth to. It's not, just not worth it to discard your cards. And I don't think the ability is even worth that much. You can find my name in the 30k trial. Am I going to see Dtai Gaming? I mean, I don't know your actual name. Where's Dtai Gaming? I see nothing. Anyway, you heard the music. When that song sings, it's time for decklist review. So go into my description. There's a link to my Discord. Join the Discord to find the channel decklist review. Enter the command exclamation point. Review deck space. Give the URL to your decklist, and you'll be eligible at random for decklist review. And of course, you can cut through the line by paying 15 USD to PayPal.me forward slash Nikachu MTG, and I'll review your. I'll definitely review your deck. It will not be random. And for thirty-five dollars, I will play one match with the deck. One match. May your matchup be good. Because for Spencer Ward, it has been terrible. It has always been terrible. Now, we do have one paywall decklist review. And it is from none other than Spencer Ward. Spencer Ward is interested in Pioneer these days. And a tribal deck called Minotaurs. All right, so we got Gnarled Scarhide. Blood Re so Gnarled Scarhide is a 2-1 creature. But you can also bestow it on another creature. Um, and it gets plus, one, plus 2, plus 1. And can't block. Whatever, we're going to be going in for the damage. Blood Rage Brawler, 2 mana, 4, 3 creature. Not bad, but you have to discard a card. So, I mean, if it's one of the last things you play, not a big deal. Metallic Mimic, hate this card. But maybe it is a necessary evil in this deck because we're going to be low on 2 drops. And I looked at the Minotaurs. There's not a whole lot to work with, to be honest. Felhide Petrifier, 3 mana, 2, 3 creature. With Death Touch, other Minotaurs you control have Death Touch. Neheb the Worthy. 2-2, two, two, first strike. Other creatures you control have first strike. As long as you have one or fewer cards in hand, Minotaurs you control get plus 2, plus 0. When they have the worthy deals common damage to a player, each player discards a card. This is a very good card. This is a very, very good card. Your Hellbent, everything is enormous. So it's basically a 4-2 creature for 3 mana with first strike. And everything is really hard to block. So... Uh, it doesn't take long and you know, I mean if and then if you combine that with death touch I mean, they're really dead that I mean they block anything first strike damage happens first death touch kicks in dot dead. It's over Rage blood. I think actually this probably should be four of uh, Rage blood shaman trample other minotaur creatures you control get plus one plus one and have trample Probably not so necessary, but the trample is probably not so necessary compared to the other abilities, but uh, the plus one plus one is very nice Ragemonger. Minotaur spells you cast cost black red less to cast. This effect reduces only the amount of colored mana you pay. And it's a 2-3 creature. I don't think there's a lot of value in this card. Because everything like this will cost me. This will make Ragemonger will make Krag Kragma War Collar affordable. But it's only going to reduce one red off of the Blade Rage, Rage Blood Shaman. Uh, actually, it makes Neheb the Worthy really cheap. Does nothing for Metallic Mimic. I think it's an awkward card in this deck. I think it's pretty awkward. Uh, and we have Kragma Warcaller. Five mana! Creatures you control have haste, which is useless because this is the last creature you play in your hand. And whenever a more Minotaur creature you control attacks, it gets plus two plus zero until end of turn. That is not bad, though. That's not bad. Should splash green for Coco? It's not a bad idea. It's not a bad... Just for Coco, it's not a bad idea. Four Thoughtseize. Four Dreadbore for removal. Do we not have Terminate in... Uh... I mean, maybe not. Not legal in Pioneer. All right. Three Colgan's command. Two Whip of Erebos. I don't like it. I I don't. I think it's really clunky. I think this card is insanely clunky. I used to be competitive with Brown Town back in the day when Infect was the best thing in 2016. Thought it might be a good in Pioneer since it keeps most cards and it's not modern viable these days. 
So, uh, taking a brief look at the primer, this deck plays similar to Slivers, with all the same benefits and detriments compounded because we're playing Minotaurs. Our Lord's Bottleneck at 3 mana, which actually is a reason you should be playing Collected Company. Uh, Felhide Petrifier, Blade Red Shaman, and Neheb the Worthy. Neheb is easily the best of these Lords. We'll be Hellbent very quickly, and when we are plus 2, plus 0, and First Strike, we, uh, we'll make our mid-sized Minotaurs take out the most threats safely. Ragemonger is the best card in our deck? Really? This is like a card that you set up, but it's going to die very often. Like, you're like, you play it, they kill it, well, then that's it. But maybe against other decks that like Goldfish, it's good. Setting up explosive turn three and turn four players, we can quickly get ahead or come back against many opponents by dropping two or more, two or three threats when it lands. If we can drop a Kragma Warcaller, yeah, if... Uh, with a body or two on turn two or four, this can shut out most of the game on the spot. Metallic Mimic is a body early, which can give us some extra power on board as we play Magic. Gnarl Skullhide is, I mean, we need a one drop. Uh, doesn't get worse late game as long as we have a body to enchant. Whip of Erebos may deserve four. It gives us pseudo card advantage and gives us massive life over a few turns with our hard hitting Minotaurs. Okay, so uh, I did work on this deck a little bit. Um. So first off, I actually was not in f love with that super expensive card, uh, the five mana thing, because I just think it's unrealistic. I'm going to keep the Rage Monger because who knows, let's see what happens. I would like to try out On Crop Crasher, which is a haste creature by itself. So three mana, three, two haste. But when you play this thing, you can at least uh, exert it. And when you do, target creature can't block this turn, giving you a little bit more of evasion. I think it's just more realistic to play cards like this than instead of the five mana thing, which is going to be, I don't, like, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you can play that five mana thing. Maybe it's actually possible, especially with the, ra with the Rage Monger, but I, I guess I have to play with this card to appreciate it. Um, five mana cards, I think, are just too risky. So, like, the, the deal is, when it's good, it will be great, but when it's bad, it's useless. I guess when it's bad, you could just dump it to uh, the Blood Rage Brawler. Here for the iconic Nikachu elevator music. <laughs> Fanatic Amogus? I was thinking about that, but there's just not that much red devotion. There's just not enough. I like... I would like... So I, t I went down to one whip of Erebos because I think this is just clunky. I think it's a very clunky card. It's insanely clunky. Creatures you control have lifelink? Like, I... It's still a... It's still a pretty heavy removal format, right? Like, we play a creature, it dies. We play a creature, it dies. Which is why I like this on-crop crasher. Um, Whip of Erebos, I guess, is good in the super long game, but it's very, very clunky. But I'll, I'll keep one just to see what it's like. I added two Swamp and took out... What did I take out? Two uh, Unclaimed Territory. I think the mana base is very, very good, but we just don't have enough mana to cast th things like Thoughtseize reliably. We don't. We need four, 14 black sources we can play on turn one. So four blood crypt. Um, oh wait a minute. We can't play. We actually can't play Thoughtseize at all on turn one. I'm wrong. Okay. This enters the battlefield tapped. This will also enter the battlefield tapped. This will also enter the battlefield tapped. Actually, uh, Dragon Skull Summit sucks. So actually, the Thoughtseize is like a turn two play. Four. Okay, actually, I take it back. I'm going to add the Unclaimed Territories back because it's just impossible given this mana base to play Thoughtseize on turn one. It's just impossible. I, I still don't believe in Fnatic Emo. I, like, I, like I, like, I like the ETB. I love the ETB, actually. But I just don't think there's just enough. Oh, is Boros Reckoner? Well, I think we're too clogged on three drops. Why didn't I see Boros Reckoner, though? In my research. Or is that not a Minotaur? He's a Minotaur, isn't he? Oh, he he didn't show up on my radar because I was looking up black and red cards and he's like gold or white. Classic Pioneer 2 color tribal decks have unplayable mana bases. Oh, the pathway is a great idea. Which one? What's the black red pathway? It'd be so much better than, say, Dragon Skull Summit. Which barely has any... There's like no swamps in this deck anyway. So which one's the... Um, can I just look up Pathway? 
Is it Blight Step? Which one of these is it? Dark Boar? Dark Boar sounds Rakdos to me. No, it's not. <laughs> it's Golgari. Craig Crown, maybe? No. Oops. Blight Step? Yeah, that's the right. Okay, that that's a much better one. That will also make uh, this whole thing playable in turn one. Bros Reckoner is okay, but he clogs up. The yeah, I, I agree. Cl you have too many three drops as it is. It, it's it would be worth it to play Collected Company in this deck, given so many three drops you have. This is a Collected Company deck for sure. Um, I'm not gonna put it in because you're pretty uh, set on Rakdos here. But it wouldn't be too hard to just add some green mana and then boom. Because uh, you only need a 10 green mana sources and I think you'd be okay. Canyon Sloth. Canyon Sloth. Castle Lothwain is also clunky. Isn't Den of the Bugbear like a playable card? Do we need how much black mana? We need four, eight, twelve. Uh, we have to keep enough for Thoughtseize. Boros Reckoner with Fanatic Mo of Mogus would work well, though. It would. Honestly, it would. Okay, so I, um, you know, I'm thinking maybe I should include a few more copies of that. I don't really want to play that five drop though. Do I want to play that 5-drop? I could remove the Web of Erebos completely and one Culligan's Command for that 5-drop creature. And then just see what happens. My instinct says it's not going to be good. Play Den of the Bugbear or Hive of the... Oh, Hive! That's what we want. Hive of the Eye Tyrant is great! How much red mana does the deck need? Some. For... Let's play Hive over this. And maybe Hive over some unclaimed territories. Okay, we're getting closer to casting Thoughtseize reliably on turn one. How many do we have? We have four, eight. Sorry. Uh, four, uh, sorry, four, eight, nine, ten. So this is looking great. Okay, so actually Thoughtseize is now incredibly playable by turn two. I mean, turn one. Not perfect, but uh, not terrible. I did used to have light up the stage for the same reason I have Canyon Sloth, but it just slowed down. Oh yeah, it's uh, that this is not a light up the stage deck for sure. This is not mana efficient at all. Nikishi, what are your thoughts on the Midnight Hunt slow lands? They're slow. That's what I think. They're very slow. Okay, let's look at the sideboard. Two Duress, three Fatal Push, one Damping Sphere, three Legions End, two Noxious Grasp, two Go Blank, and two Ashug Dream Render. Cool. I think. I, I mean, I think the sideboard is fine. <laughs> Go Blank. It's showing the art card here. I mean, I can't. What is this card? It's funny. Go Blank had a blank card. Target player discards two cards, then exiles all cards from that graveyard. That's fine. That's totally fine. Well, the, the deal is this deck does play a cost reducer with uh, Ragemonger, which I'm not in love with. I would actually prefer probably Coco in this deck. And I mean, outside of Coco though, okay, outside of this, I would prefer actually there is, we just played the other cards instead of this. I am terrified we play this card, then they kill it. And then, you know, nothing changes. And then if you top deck this, so let's say we're empty handed and we top deck this, it'd be brutal. And by the way, uh, do we need Dread Boar? Is Dread Boar better than, say, um, Blood Chief's Thirst? <laughs> Go Blank, some of my favorite recent Magic Art cards. Go Blank is the best mind rot. Oh, Death and Cat Mix, welcome. 
<laughs> splash Coke and we join. We right now we're gonna splash Rakdos. We're just gonna be on Rakdos. All right, so that's great. I think that list is very good. Thanks for some minute, and we will see how well this does uh, in the in our event. Okay, so now we have I, we have a little bit of time. We can play. We can go find a free deck list review. Poverty deck list review. Chris Ross. The rich get richer, don't they? The rich get richer. Chris Ross <laughs> paid for deck list review not too long ago. Now he's just chosen for deck list review. Warrior time. Description first, Nikachu. I appreciate that. I appreciate people war letting me know that there's a description. I'm not reading all this. That's too much. Oh, well, th we did this already. Yeah, you pay. You paid for this. All right, so uh, we'll just skip that. Just your luck. You paid for this just a week ago. The warriors. All right, the big apple. You've gotten. Cho you've become chosen for deck list review. Yeah, we'll do another. Rakdos 8-Ball by the Big Apple. New York City is going to play Rakdos. All right, we have Gold Hound. Menace. First Strike. Sacrifice it. Add one man of any color. Okay. it's interesting. Actually, that's an interesting card. Sack it. Add one man of any color. I'm surprised it's not seeing more play in some deck. This looks like it could be broken in some sort of combo deck. Stitcher Supplier. Thunderkin Awakener. Lightning Skelemental. Two Spite Bellows. Two Ognixilis the Adversary, two Fatal Push, uh, two Inquisition, four Lightning Bolt, four Thoughtseize, four Unearth, two Village Rites, two Terminate. There is a lot less uh, Ball Lightnings in this deck than I thought. Two block, okay, and then we have a Mana Base. What is going on here? It's like it was an eight Ball deck, but then you downgraded it to a four Ball deck. There's literally just one ball lightning in this deck. I've seen gold hounded to turn to Liliana. <laughs> At that point, you might as well just play a mana dork if that was the purpose of it. That's a really good point way of putting it. It's a treasure that attacks. It's like a treasure that can attack and block. So what is the point? The deal is you just want turn to lightning scale metal with this. Okay, what does Obnixilis do again? Each opponent loses two life. They discard a card. If you control a demon or devil, you gain two life. Create a 1-1. One, one. I, I th okay, so off the top of my head, you got no... What 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 is this deck anyway? It's basically Rakdos Control. It's basically Rakdos Control. When it leaves play, it deals damage to target creature. You have Thunderkin Awakener to bring back Lightning Scale Metal and Spite Bells. But the problem is Light uh, Thunderkin Awakener will probably die very often. So how do you win it long time? Flamekin Harbinger? This doesn't, this is sort of, it is, it depends on the deck. I don't know if this deck can afford this card. Because it's like a grindy deck, but this is card disadvantage. It's card quality, like it's good card quality. Rid of this thing. Is Inquisition still good modern? Absolutely. Absolutely. So they tried to, I, I think, that, like this, this creature base looks really weak. Like really, really weak. Really, really, really weak. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna say. Get rid of the gold hound and the uh, no, and a stitcher supplier. Add four ball lightning. Like you need more, you need more ball lightnings in this deck. And then maybe we do play with some flamekin harbingers to help find your ball lightning. Because like the whole deck, like things like thunderkin awakener, unearth, 
they're just dead. They're and village rights, they're just dead if you do not get the right cards. I guess you actually maybe Flamekin Harbinger is really good value with village rights. You can play the Flamekin Harbinger, put the card on top, then village rights it away. Village rights the Flamekin Harbinger away and draw your card. Oh, the coffee is great today. Croxa would be also be a very good card in this deck, I think. You need to find Thunderkin. Is this uh, an elemental? Oh, it is an elemental. Okay, uh, Flamekin Harbinger is not bad then. I don't think you need to find this card. I think the idea is hit your opponent a few times with Lightning Scale Metal. There is this deck does have a problem with like closing out the game though. I can I can tell that from a mile away. This deck does not have a very good way to close out the game. Can you sack the Flamekin Harbinger? You can probably sack the Flamekin Harbinger also to Obnixilis. This cast this spell, you may sacrifice a creature with X power. When you do, copy the spell, becomes a copy of the token. Or, no, sorry, the copy becomes a token. Uh, yeah, okay, so I guess that could work. Well, Fury is going overboard. If Fury doesn't have any synergy with Unearth, I think anything that you can unearth is pretty good. Unearth and easily village rights away. Another hive is totally reasonable. Uh, maybe over the Dragon Skull Summit. Oh, I think the bu the mana base has to be budget. I cannot, otherwise it doesn't make sense. Because there's definitely better cards that they can have. Okay. So definitely have Flamekin Harbinger in the deck. And you can also, you know, bring it back with Unearth and Village Rights. Uh, village Rights it away. So let's look at cards that we can expend. Three Gold Hound, two Stitcher Supplier, and I think the Spike Bellows we can also get rid of. Or maybe you can have one. You can have one Spike Bellows in the deck because you can go find it with the Flamekin Harbinger, right? So we'll have four. So how many, how many cards does that give us? Three, four, five, six. So four Flamekin Harbinger. I think you have two more Ball Lightning in this deck. I ideally would like to have Croxa. I think Croxa is pretty good in this deck as well. Because Crocs is a card that you can, like, win the long game with. What is Crocs? Is that an elemental in any way? Probably not. I think it's just a demon of some sort. Or it's an Elder Giant. Makes a one loyalty ob Obnox token. That's totally fine. Spark or Hellspark elemental? Nah, we, I mean, I would rather remove all the removal... And then go all in on that type of deck. But this is a... This is like a... It's a Rakdos mid-range deck that is trying to like leverage a little bit of value with these like elementals just some of the just the best ones of all of them cut two bolts what for two croxes that's that's reasonable it's possible uh croxes oh crox as a card is expensive holy moly 57 dollars for the secret layer one 23 bucks for every other one. Okay, Croxa might be expensive. Okay, then we'll just go with that. Add Flamekin Harbingers, Ball Lightnings, and your deck is good. I think that would. I think that's more worth it than your Gold Hound and Stitcher Supplier and Spite Bell. And you leave one Spite Bellows because you can find it with your with your uh, um, Flamekin Harbinger. See, this is just a tutor for your elementals, and you might even want. And then after that, you might realize, oh, maybe I want other elementals in this deck. And also, you can bring back Flamekin Harbinger. With your Thunderkin Awakener, if there's nothing else to go get in your graveyard, so you get bring back the Flamekin Harbinger to get the to go get another Elemental and put it on top of your library. And I think the rest is okay. You can live with the rest of this. Great stuff. All right, that's it for Coffin MTG. Thank you so much for joining me today. As usual, we do this Monday to Friday, eight o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Be there or be square. I got a PO box. Send me stuff and I'll open it up on the channel. Thank you very much, everyone, for the super chats and becoming members of the Coffee Crew. Uh, but thank you so much, importantly, for showing up every single morning. Because without you, there'd be no conversation. So modern is still being modern. A lot of good decks in the metagame. A lot of new decks sprouting up. Shows that there's still innovation to be had. So keep brewing up those coffees, and we'll keep brewing up the magic. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you at the next cup.